Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Adept is Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. His name is Bricky. We're going to learn all about 40K and how horrible the world is. But before we do, if you enjoyed today's episode, head over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Adept is Ridiculous, and consider supporting maybe one of your favorite Warhammer 40K podcasts. You get access to the Discord, uh, bloopers if they happen, uh, the $15 tier, uh, get you access to all of the HD posters, which, by the by, Bricky, did you know, fun fact, we have a new one. Uh, so I didn't know that we'd... Uh, oh, that's actually pretty good. This is, like, easily my favorite, I think, poster. Like, it is just really good. It kind of sort of reminds me... It gives me a Darkest Dungeon vibe. I was thinking the exact same thing. I was thinking of mm-hmm. Vestal from Darkest Dungeon. Mm-hmm. It's really, really good. Halliday killed this one. I yeah. mean, they kill all of them, but this one is just nice. I genuinely was expecting like a, a thick thighs Vastor or something because we're so into that thing <laughs> with like the big lantern eyes. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm I'm so okay with this. It's timely. It's solid. It can now be purchased probably at the merch store. Uh, so check that out along mm-hmm. with the new sweatpants. But uh, besides the great new merch that we have, Shy actually has a special, super special secret announcement that she's going to tell all of you about right now. Hello, scum. Apologies for my prolonged absence. But now that prosecution had to drop the charges to say that I am excited to be back with you would be an absolute lie. Some of you know that I spent most of my career in laugh track here reviewing video games. But a few years back I've decided that I should stop sampling digital diarrhea of others because it's time to produce my own. I joined a team and acted as the creative director for the upcoming game called Starcrossed, which is a visual novel dating sim, a genre my audience should be intimately familiar with in more ways than one. The game is set in a bittersweet post-war setting where you can date men, women and space lizards, go for a drink with them, look at the stars, experience traumatic memories, have a dinner, all the fun lovers things. Company I work for already has the funding so there's no Kickstarter or early access. Go to Steam and wishlist the game so Mama can afford her anger management classes. Yes, shy thing. Awesome. Wahoo. <laughs> Coolness. Yes, shy thing. Awesome. Cool. Oh, also, don't sound too um, excited. <laughs> well, I well, cuz I don't know what I don't know what happened. We I the, know, the ad is the thing. You shut it's up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, Assassin Norm Kingmaker is our book. Go read it. Ooh. Ooh. I'm actually Ooh. already about an hour in, and it's. I was really excited to get started, and it's so far quite good. Nice. Thank God. <laughs> I was a little worried. <laughs> after after Master of Mankind, I was like, please be good. Please be good. Please be good. So. <sighs> so. Stretcher. Stretch your legs, stretch your stretch arms. Stretch it out, get a nice stretch going, chat. Flare yeah, them yeah. lats. Ah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All the goodness, all the greatness. Are you ready, DK? You know what the topic is today. Uh, do I? Is this, has the Lion Book come out? Is that what we're doing today? Yes. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure because I was like, wait, does the Lion Book come out like this week or did it come out last week? Or is it next week? I wasn't sure. I wasn't the, sure. The Lion Book is out. The Arcs of Omen. Well, technically two Lion Books are out. The Arcs of Omen Lion Book is out. But there is also Lion, the Lion, Son of the Forest, which is a new book about the lion that has also come out. Mm, is that the one with that really cool, like, green hardback, like, limited edition cover? That Because I think I saw that on Twitter and... God, that book just aesthetically, anyway, looks great. I uh, uh, actually, I don't know, but you might be right. I it has the the main cover is the one where it has the tiny the tiny head that you don't like. Oh, we might be thinking of different things then, but that's okay. Cool, he's got two books that came out though. Yes, that's, that's uh, poggers, right. Yeah, Lion, <clears throat> Son of the Forest is the newest book. Uh, kind of considered whether we should be reading that one instead, but I didn't know exactly when its release date was. Yeah, or if um, it's on, even on Audible or, yeah. I think it just now got on Audible like like two days ago. So. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, Lion, Son of the Forest is, in a sense, kind of a prequel. Oh, wow, that is a really good looking. Oh, hardback. there it is. That's so cool. That's the one. Oh, man, I love that. So, oh, that's great. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, Sorry. this is why. This is a, that's, a, that's actually a really good excerpt from the back there. I failed my father. I fa- fear I also failed my brothers. I do not wish to fail my sons. Oh, nice good, actually. Wow. Nice, nice. Um, but this seems to be kind of a prequel to the Lion Arcs of Omen itself. Um, and it should note that I don't want to spoil much of the actual Sons of the Forest book, even though I did need to do a little bit of research on it to, to fill in a few gaps for the Arcs of Omen book. Mm-hmm. Um, just some things about like what the lion's been up to. Not specific yeah. stuff, but what he's been <clears throat> up to more so than anything. Sure, sure. But okay. um, this, I do believe, is the last Ark of Omen book. Oh, no, it's over. Oh, it man. is over, I believe, until 10th edition comes out. Damn, I've been loving the Arcs of Omen so much. I was kind of hoping it was just going to have like a Horus Heresy run where there'd be like 47 of them. And that- I would love all of them. That would be kind of fun, but I'm assuming this is prepping us for the big shenanigans happening in 10th. Oh, man. Okay, fine. It's good like, enough. All good things must come to an end, right? Isn't that the last episode of uh, TNG? All good things? I think it's also a quote from Shakespeare, but yes, it was also the 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 name of the last two episodes of Star Trek. Next I, Generation. I yes. know that it's been <clears throat> all right. Sure anyway. you did, Bricky. Sure you did. That's why you immediately went to Star Trek. I just like we're, you. You're a TNG fan. I am. I am actually a TNG fan. I big fan. I hate Picard. The, oh, the new right. series, anyway. The the Paramount one is yeah. Awful. It's it looks trash. It's terrible. anyway. Um. Mm. So, in the beginning of this book is the classic little flavor text they like to throw out. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a bit long like the other ones, but here it goes. That's what she said. <sighs> <laughs> long slumbered the lion in tragedy's wake. Far wandered his sleeping mind, following strange paths through the arboreal mists of a shadowed world, even as slowly, so slowly, his broken body healed. Monstrous and otherworldly were the things he hunted through shadowed ghost glades, while beyond his crypt the stars wheeled and the sands of time whirled upon hurricane winds. The lion slept on. Darkness deepened between the stars. Tragedy piled upon tragedy. Hope became the opiate of fools, and even such heroes as Lion L. Johnson dwindled into whispered myth. Then light then wakefulness, then striding tall, purposeful, armored, blade in hand, cowled and watchful, the mind dislocated from its old truths, even as the body burned with fresh vitality and the hearts beat with the cold resolution of vengeance. Parting veils of silvered shadow through the ghosts of Caliban's slain forests, the lion walked abroad in the galaxy once more for loyalty, for the hunt, for the emperor. Ooh, that that's a great opening. Oh, it's a man. very good opening. I, uh, I, I, what, what was it? Uh, hope was the opiate of the heroes. Hope is oh. the, was the opiate of the fools of the fools. That's fair. That's, that's even better. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's great! I love that. So we're already off to a bang with uh, with 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 this Arcs of Omen book. Oh, this whole book is a banger. This oh this hell might be, yeah, let's go. This might be one of my favorites because so the five books we've had so far have been Abaddon, Angron, Vashtor, Farsight, and now the Lion. Mm-hmm. Abaddon was great because it introduced us to Vashtor, and we learned plenty about him. Angron was great because we had a massive, massive chaos, chaos dub. dub. Huge dumb. <laughs> Vashtor, I originally was a little lukewarm on, but I think I've kind of come around to it because Bellacor mm-hmm. is like just such a petulant dick. Uh-huh. Um, and it was and a lot of fun. And you also get the Unmaker cannon, right? Yep, you get the, the AI and stuff, and it was just mm-hmm. really enjoyable. Uh, Farsight was all right. It was a little bit of a side story, um, but it was still it, fun enough. Yeah, it's crazy that so far to me, Farsight has been the worst one of the Arcs of Omen. And that was still phenomenal. It was still really good. Yeah. So the lion, though, mm-hmm. the lion. So the lions come back 
and he's he's awake and he's actually been out and about already. The idea oh. is that the Sons of the Forest book is his out and aboutness in the beginning. Oh, um, so he wakes up at like the beginning of Sons in the Forest or Sons of the Forest, and then he just goes around and starts like r- wrangling his dark guys. Or like, w- so how does that go? Dark angels, you mean? What did I say? I guess I just said dark, dark guys. Dark guys. <laughs> Listen, the coffee hasn't kicked in yet, so some stuff is gonna get said that doesn't make sense. Just, just, just wait for the caffeine to kick all right, in. All right, all right Jesus. Fine. So the yeah he's been up and about uh, for mm-hmm. a bit, and this part the book opens with him a little bit farther back, um, a little bit farther after he's already been out and about. And when mm-hmm. the lion wakes up, what what do you think he would do? Like he's woken up, he sees the galaxy because like all the things that you want, like him talking to Gilliman, all that shit is apparently in the book. Oh, all of it. Uh, like all the stuff we're kind of curious about, like how does he feel about the galaxy? Mm-hmm. What uh, you know, what's going on here, et cetera, et cetera. That's apparently all in in the Sons of the Forest book. Oh well, um, great. <clears throat> so you're not going to get any of that here. Mm-hmm. Um, but what do you think the lion's been up to? Uh, I think he's been angrily killing a lot of people. You're half right. Oh, so. The lion has a new sp- power that Ooh. I don't quite understand. Okay. Um, it's called Forest Walk. And one of his sons, mm. uh, in the beginning of this book, was dueling him. And uh, they were him and a few of his sons were dueling him, you know, keeping him sharp and stuff. And yeah. the lion and him, like, kind of locked eyes for, for a while before saying something. And as they did that, his son, like, feel the spectral nature of Caliban's forests kind of wreathed around him, almost like tendrils of mist and green around the lion. And he felt the heavy, heaving breath of one of Caliban's monsters on the back of his neck before it kind of, like, snapped away. And oh. so the lion has been able to... uh Kind of teleport now um, oh. by walking through the corporeal dead forests of once Caliban. He just kind of like, like walks through a portal of forest. That's weird. It's a little bizarre. Yeah, so he makes a portal that's... Basically, the dead ghost forest of Caliban, and he walks through it, and then he can teleport anywhere? Or is there a limitation on it? Or, I don't, that sounds confusing. It's it's a little bizarre. It might be explained in the book more, uh, because at the moment, it isn't explained in the Arcs of Omen one. Okay. Um, uh, but... It's basically, there's, and actually it's an ability he has in-game called Forest Walk, where he just can, like... Like go wherever he wants, yeah. yeah. Um, but it is that kind of weirdness. And and Shy, if you want to read that, Shy makes a good point. Uh, Shy says, Well, he got warped with Caliban, which also got thrown into the warp. So maybe Caliban Forest are now partially in the warp and he can enter them and use it as warp travel. It's a partly possible situation. Um, uh, that's fair. I hadn't thought about that. That's yeah, that could be. I've uh, I've sent you or I I placed or they are currently at the moment uploading um some little photos from the book. Uh they show off the kind of Caliban forests a little bit and and they're pretty awful looking, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Well, Caliban's forests were no joke, right? Like they they were teeming with awful beasts that uh the dark angels and um the lion had to like completely terminate, right? Because it was just so awful. It was just, we got to clear this shit out. Yeah. I mean, it, we would say that it reminds you of like Bloodborne when the, the guy's like, foul beasts away, away. <laughs> um, but yeah, like the, you know, there's, oh. you can see the sword there. Mm-hmm. And I apologize. The light is, is a little bit. That's ah, fine. Yeah. But you, in the second one, you can kind of see a little bit of like the, the tendrils of the forest and all the. Yeah. Stuff. Like roots of the tree. And it's it's it all looks very sort of uh, haunted forest and Halloween type. Of yeah. Vibe. So 
the lion has been using that to teleport around the place, and he's been looking for his sons. Naturally. But he's specifically been looking for his fallen sons. Oh, he's of course he would look for the fallen. That's probably his priority is to find all the fallen and make sure they are dealt with. I, I guess he's probably also specifically looking for Luther. Like he's probably pretty hard after Luther after uh, everything that happened. Uh, I'm not sure about Luther, but you say dealt with. He's not doing that. He's forgiving them. Oh, Captain is, Genocide is forgiving the fallen? He is going about finding the fallen. If the fallen he finds are worshipping or tainted by chaos, he puts the knife in, a th- in their throat. Of course, because they've been tainted by chaos, sure. But if they're not, he holds his hand out and offers them a second chance. Huh. His, wow. Uh, he is finding and reincorporating the fallen that do not follow chaos back into his group. And he is calling them <laughs> the risen. I I genuinely did not expect that. When you oh. said he was hunting the fallen, I was like, okay, they're all going to die. It doesn't matter what their excuse is. It doesn't matter what they're doing. This, the lion... He is gonna cut off their heads and 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 use them as an example. To hear that he's actually forgiving them and reintegrating them into the Dark Angels is is kind of what. And like Shai just said, congratulations, Dark Angels! You spent ten thousand years doing shit your dad didn't want you to do. Dork Angels, dorks. Yes. So he is actually. Uh, it's apparently in the book. He's going around and finding these uh, pirates or various people that have not turned to chaos as fallen. And he's bringing them back to fight with him. And they're called the risen and the redeemed. And wow. it's, he's uh, dueling with these reintegrated fallen in the beginning of this book. Boars. Huh. Uh, is, and they're, they're, they're also just like great I love these guys. They are they have so much personality, unlike mm-hmm. other kind of Marines. They are like 30k Marines over the course of 10,000 years. So apparently they're all like mini John Wicks. <laughs> really? Because they they've been hunted and hounded for 10,000 years, but they're they've all oh. but they never went to chaos, so they're kind of like kind of sly. You know, one of the one of the main guys right. got named Boars, and Boars has this big old eye patch over his eye and in the mm-hmm. text, it's who um, like Boars was always called one eye, yet always saw true, whose strike was sudden, singular, unstoppable, whose oath was to liege, but not to realm. It was wow. like they're all these kinds of just they're basically chaos space marines in the sense of they've had 10,000 years of battle hardened war, but they're like yeah. on their own. They're kind of like lone soldiers and you'll like this. They're still clad in the black and red armor of the old school days. Oh, let's go. They've they have immediately risen above, <laughs> risen yeah, above risen. Uh, all of the other dark angels in my eyes. Let's go. Although I guess it's fair if they've been like avoiding and been able to avoid the dark angels all this time. They kind of have to be badass. Not only have they been avoiding the dark angels, they haven't been corrupted by chaos and they've been thriving and surviving. I mean, they kind of have to be like, like you said, mini John wicks. Otherwise they would have been found and tortured and or murdered by now. Yep. And also uh shy makes a good point. GW stopped using rules for the fallen because the fallen are now not just chaos. They're, some of them, they just probably integrate themselves already into chaos, or they are these guys, the Risen. How are Dark Angels fans taking that? Because, like, for the longest, like, we, we all know the meme, right? Oh, brother, I've fallen and I can't, right? Like, how, how, how are Dark Angels fans taking this? Well, I mean, Dork Angel fans aren't allowed to complain about anything because they got a Primark <laughs> back, so they can suck my dick. Oh, um, well, actually, that's fair. I hadn't thought that's a fair trade. Yeah, yeah, fair uh, enough. That being said, um, it's more so I, I think it's the fact that like, yeah, not all fallen 
were chaos people. And if the lion's going to redeem anyone, it's going to be the fallen that didn't, you know, like, sure. Go in that that didn't, direction. didn't go to chaos. And yeah, sure. What's this DK in football terms? It's like you ain't allowed to bitch after your team for five years after winning the Super Bowl. Oh, well, that yeah, that's fair. Like the goddamn Chiefs. God anyway, damn sorry. Chiefs. God so damn the lion Chiefs. has his risen and they're all dueling and sparring on uh, the flagship. Uh, I mean, a flagship, but the main ship of Commander Dante uh, of the Blood Angels. Mm-hmm. And they're making their way out to, you know, they're talking a little bit. The um, It's kind of nice because the lion, I forgot that the lion actually has like a little bit of humor. He's like the a dry wit, very dry, <laughs> stern humor um, like a knight would have. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so there's a little there's a little bit of back and forth. The fallen are, are very much like, oh, yeah, no, we trust you, dad, but uh, we don't trust any of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> and and he's like, what, you think they're not going to do what I say? And he's like, that's not the problem. I was, that's not that's not the issue we're worried about. They know they'll, uh, they'll do what you say, but it's not that easy. Mm-hmm. Also, how does the lion feel about uh, the Dark Angels uh, when he wakes up? Because they've obviously become a lot more paranoid and a lot more untrusting of everybody around them. Does, does the... Uh, general mindset of the dark angels change when the primarch wakes up well so the dark angels don't realize he's awake yet at least not the main congru- uh, contingent oh. of the dark angels okay gotcha i i guess i figured they knew because you know the rock is empty now the uh there's a meme uh, well the rock is not empty it's full well, of it's just he's just not there anymore oh he's just not there yeah yeah i, I think somebody would have been like hey nobody's sleeping in these chambers anymore i guess there, there's nobody guarding them per se either there's a there's like a, a meme i saw there was the part from pulp fiction and it's like the lion using forest walk appearing on an imperial world citizen i am lionel johnson primarch of the dark angel son of the emperor what world is this and some random imperial citizen went, went for a hike what <laughs> They speak English and what? <laughs> what? Say what again? So he's out there sparring with his group, heading over to regroup with his old sons at the rock mm-hmm. uh, after he has gathered some of his risen fallen. And, and let's be clear. It's not many. Like there's, they only listed six in this book. Oh, um, okay. So it's not like every fallen has been reintegrated. It's just these. Okay. Gotcha. So he's got, and if you're a little curious about how he feels, here's a quote. Nothing now remains of the realm my father wrought. Whatever light we spread between the stars has guttered and died, and in its place stretches darkness without end. Our enemies move freely through this galaxy of shadows and believe themselves always to be hunters, never prey. That is their mistake. I will teach them to fear the darkness in which they dwell and to dread the shadows they believe their allies. For there is no greater terror hunting the Stygian void than the Lion of Caliban. That's the lion I remember. That's the lion. <laughs> There's you're the for. lion I was looking for. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so if we remember from the end of the Vashtor book, or I think it was the Vashtor book. Um, all of the Chaos Space Marines were implanted with some kind of Vashtor warpness and all blurted out the location of where Vashtor was going. Yeah. And so now, despite the fact that they kind of know it's a trap, the Dark Angels recuperated their losses and have decided to make their way out all the way to wherever this area is. And okay. this area is called the Idolatros system or Idolatros. Kind of reminds me of the, what's cool. the, the uh, Solarian, the Dalatras. Oh, yeah, the Dalatras. That was the Solarian home yeah. world. Yeah. No, no, that was the their, um, like, a main prime minister lady. I, man, I let the council die 10 times out of 10 in Mass Effect 1. Yeah, they were awful. 10 times out of 10. Ah, uh, uh, yes, Vashtor. I thought we had dismissed that claim. <laughs> anyway, um, so out here, way in this area, in the Idolatras system, there lies Vashtor's challenge. And the Dark Angels were attempting to 
uh, use their psychers to kind of get a little bit of foresight. Uh, because that's what they always do. They try to see it in the future, see what that might be awaiting at them. Mm-hmm. And as the Dark Angels were doing this, they had this like kind of mirror with them this, to help use the psychic powers. Yeah. And the image of themselves in the mirror crack and shattered as uh, bits, bits of glass flew towards them, like, you know, at pretty high speeds. Yeah, that and, seems uh, like a bad omen. <laughs> and, and also burned in two blazing lantern eyes. Oh, yeah, that's a bad omen. That's that's not what you want to see. So the idea is that they think to themselves there is some form of treachery afoot, some form of thing, and it's going to take the form of themselves in some way. Oh, boy. Oh, not again. Not again. (laughs) Not again. (laughs) But despite that all, they head on out and they make their way to the Idol Trust system. Uh, by this uh, nebula of things called the uh, Somnium Stars. And in there was a huge bale fleet and the Ark of Omen, the Netherworld Blade. Ooh, cool name. I like it. In this Netherworld Blade came all kinds of stuff. Giant dark Mechanicum battle barges, uh, huge dark like Vastor-based ships that were had tendrils coming out of them, ships with maws of teeth and cool. eyes. And oh, nice. All kinds of stuff. And by it was this great uh, part of an open rift over to the warp kind of thing, like, like kind of like a you know, the galaxy split in half, so like a little pocket of that around there. Mm-hmm. Oh. And because of that, there were just these, these nightmarish things. Like, they had such crazy descriptions. It was... um. Uh, holes bloated and transmuted by flesh or flame wreathed crystals, oh. armed with snaking tendrils and maws. Um, oh. oh, there was there was one that was it was a gigantic crystalline pyramid with bat wings. Oh wow! Oh, I mean, I, they are. <laughs> there's a what was it? A warp portal rift thing right there. So all manner of nightmarish chaos bull spit is is probably pouring out of that thing and you have vashtor doing vashtor things so i mean yeah it seems fitting that it should be just a nightmare i mean they're firing out like all kinds of stuff buffed up warp lightning parasite missiles etc ew and parasite missiles yeah ew it was nasty but to start off the dark angels just <clears throat> They have three quarters of the Dark Angels right here. That includes their successor chapters. Like three quarters of the First Legion are here. And despite the insanity of the demon um, firepower and them losing, you know, still a decent amount of ships, the Dark Angels fought them up. Well, I mean, rightfully so if it's three quarters of the Dark Angels. Um, I guess they really should kind of own uh, a pocket of chaos. Yes, it's uh, I mean, it's a, quite a lot, but yeah. they did the damage in. But yes, the, the Dark Angels hit a massive dub. <laughs> OK, cool. Ma- Good for massive, them. Good for them. Massive dubs all around. And they were able to break through the Neverworld Bla- uh, Netherworld Blade Arc of Omen and despite the fact that it took a goddamn long time, it broke apart. And despite suffering casualties, this big old Vashtor fleet was broken down and destroyed. A uh, common space marine dub. But with that, they press deeper into this idle trust system with all of their engines moving quicker. It's like the, the unforgiven will not rest while this challenge goes unanswered. <laughs> moving okay. more and more. As their uh, the bail fleet rushed away, uh, the the surviving members of the chaos fleet, mm-hmm. and then some weird fee stuff started happening. Oh boy, I love it when Warhammer does weird fee stuff. The tech marines aboard the Rock started noticing a warp resonance, weird harmonic shuddering in the stations, a physical feeling of like anger and and nightmarish like dislocation all throughout the Rock. And as oh word boy. spread, it was like this crawling sense of dread, an invisible threat that was not there. Okay. Some weird aura and disquiet 
from whatever device Vastor had fashioned way out uh, in the Idol Trust system. Mm -hmm. So as they moved through, they checked out their extreme long range vids, uh, uh, visual things, vid, vid, vid screens, vid screens. Mm -hmm. And this is what they saw. Okay. Oh, uh oh, that my friend, what is, is a is the surface of a planet. Oh, they look far down at a massive thing in the system, a giant oh. demonic world. Wow. It is a, a Vastor made demon world, a, a, a part industrial, part organic hellscape of cogs and flesh, turning pistons and oil of cultists, blazing industry, and, and the demonic masses that churn throughout. Wow, that is, uh, that, oof, uh, that, that is a nightmare planet indeed. That is a nightmare cast planet if I've ever seen one. Through the long range scanners and various types of uh, material that the Dark Angels had on the rock, they noticed coastlines, urban sprawls, the oceans, the forests, and they were all an exact match for Caliban. Oh, I was about to say when I saw the forest part, I was like, is this like, uh, is this like, uh, did, did Vashtor grab like pieces of Caliban to make his demon world? The, not just pieces, like this is Caliban. Oh, so he literally like took the, the, the pieces of warp Caliban and, and, oh, uh, what a, what a jerk. Oh, yeah. What, it, what a fur. Cope, see the mauled, unforgiven. I have rebuilt your world and depicted you as the soy jack. Oh, man. That's, oh, that sucks. That sucks for the Dark Angels. And they mm -hmm. must immediately know it when they look, right? They must just be like, oh, God. Yep. Azrael checked it. That's what, how he was able to find out because, like, these coastlines exactly match. These forest populations exactly match. And oh, he seeds. Oh, I'm sure. I I I am sure. I'm it's all of them must just start seething like mad to see their like corrupted homeworld just chaos ridden. Like that's gotta be the worst thing you could do to well, to any chapter, I guess, really, right? Well, not it's not just that, but think about it. Caliban and what happened to Caliban is supposed to be a secret. Oh, the Dark Angels don't want anyone to know. So not only are they t being taunted, but Va but Bastor is basically like, hey, I know you cheated on your wife. I'm standing all the way over the here with the text messages on on the phone. Neener, uh, neener, neener. I'm going to send it. I'm going to send it. He's got the receipts. He he's kept the, the receipts. Not only did he rebuild the whole thing, but he's now using it to blackmail you. Oh, man. Vashtor, you son of a... Damn. So, so naturally, the Dark Angels are like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, to I say am the least. Full speed ahead. <laughs> right into a trap, I assume, right? Well, I mean, maybe. But before that, we actually get a flashback. Abaddon oh. and the Vengeful Spear and stuff are all there waiting uh, in, in this area behind the demon world for the Dark Angels. Mm -hmm. And it flax, uh, flack, flashes back to when him and Vastor spoke in that room alone in the Vengeful Spirit the first time they talked that we never got to hear. Mm -hmm. And Vastor, this is a little confusing and it's mainly because Vashtor speaks weird. He, he yeah. speaks like a demon. He's not necessarily in riddles. He just talks funny. I thought um, Vashtor kind of spoke plainly and uh, didn't like to do like riddles. And he was just very uh, upfront and just direct. Not not like that. Like um, he doesn't speak in in false tongues. He isn't lying to you. But he just because he's a demon, he just talks weird. Oh, OK. Like, like he just like his manner. For example, um. 
uh, where is it? Um, he says, like, you seek the mechanism by which true victory assured be. Is this not true? You know, it's, it's just like it's just like a weird way to mix your message. <laughs> he sounds like Yoda. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> mm, he says, mm, mm, seek the truth, you do. Um, but anywho, uh, it's actually really cool. The idea that the two of them walked in this chamber and as Vashtor speaks, all of the Vox emitters and stuff around the room speak with his voice, even including the one in Abaddon's throat. Oh, creepy. So, you know, I that like part it, in Mass Effect three, when the Rachni spoke through all the dead Krogan. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So like that. It's like that, but with mechanisms. And so it's like a bunch of static overlaid stuff like all blaring at the same time. Very cool. I like that. So they're speaking. And he says, mm-hmm. uh, Vashtor says, long before the forebears of your race squirmed midst primordial ooze, a war there was between entities you would think gods. Abaddon says, I know of the great game and the gods that play it. And Vashtor Waves the object in aside. Different gods, these were. Pantheons bound to the realm of mortal things that had wrought their own divinity. On one side, they were, were uh, they who were named the Old Ones. On the other, the uh-huh. parasite gods of Void and Star. Furor they raised across the Void. Dread powers they unleashed. Such even that they, with their mantles of omnipotence, comprehended not fire they yoked never believing it would burn them okay 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 long and long raged their conflict heavy was its price one after one they toppled and lesser minds crawled in their wake craven desperate they saw not the power of their vanished master's devices but only the terror of what such technologies had wrought that which they could not break apart or unmake the fearful sealed away in realms neither empiric or nor corporeal. The vault they locked. The key they sundered. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yes, Shai. Even even I, yes. uh, a Warhammer newbie, is like, okay, this is the war in heaven, right? It's yes, telling. this is the war in heaven. Because I guess if you're in the 40th millennium, you don't know anything about that. How could you, right? A, a like, little bit. I mean, if you're new, sure. But yeah, this is this is the old ones in the Catans war. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, yeah, it, as an Imperium, like, uh, space marine, you couldn't possibly know about that unless you, I don't know, interrogated an Eldar or a Necron that knew about it, and they were like, oh, hey, uh, let me tell you a story. Yeah, only the Eldar and Necrons would know. Yeah. Um. So this is news to Abaddon. He's like, excuse what? No, Abaddon knows about, uh, or maybe maybe he doesn't know about this. But I I'm, I don't know. I, I don't think he's. Well, I think he's plenty interrogated the Eldar. But maybe he, maybe Abaddon <laughs> doesn't even know about the uh, about the what? war in heaven just because it's not important to him. I guess that's true. He probably has interrogated his fair share of Eldar. So, um, good old Vastor basically says that the uh, vault is hidden from his sight. But if we were to fashion these key, the key would then lead them to the lock. Three were the worlds to which those ancient servants bound the crucial mechanisms of the key, hoping forever to imprison them. One world has long since rotted, and Plague Heart was unleashed. Keep fragment one, Plague Heart. Another became empty and desolate, and with all its jailers long dead and turned to dust, the, ch- to the Tuchulka escaped, for it desired, needed, to be used. And the third right. world, to, who, to whose essence the Ouroboros was bound, the third was shattered by a betrayal most gratifying, and that world's name, great to spoiler, was Caliban. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, bound within... The Sea of Souls fracturing through Calabam. They have gathered two of the three. They have gathered the Plague Heart, the Ouroboros, and now to fashion the key uh, required from uh, Caliban, they needed to grab all of the various bits and pieces 
that were spread across the warp due to the warp storm that ripped Caliban asunder. Okay, so they didn't so they didn't put Caliban back together because they're petty jerks that wanted to just make the Dark Angels mad. They needed that last piece of the key. They needed that last artifact. Well, one could argue they did it for both reasons. <laughs> I guess pissing off the Dark Angels was a nice little uh, bonus, right? <laughs> a little bit. So it, it's a little hard to follow, but long story short, it's a three-part key. And yeah. a lot of the seemingly unimportant artifacts, like a big stone mason pillar and that dark talon jet fighter um, with the crystals in it, all were just yanked away from Caliban at the time. And because of that, they are being brought back together into this remaked version of Caliban. The Plague Heart, the Ouroboros, and finally what he needs is the Tuchoka engine. And this okay. Tuchoka engine is currently aboard the rock. Hence his attempt to take it in the Vastor ah, episode. Gotcha, gotcha. What this does will create something known as the Dissonance engine whose power is to bore through the space between the Imperium and the Corporeal, which is a.k.a. the Webway. Oh, boy, that's uh, that. Yeah, I guess that's kind of a big deal. It Mm -hmm. says one of the great tunneling engines it once was now a thing of gouging and ruin. Shall I make of it like a worm that is a god? Shall it chew through the spaces between until at last it finds the lock into which it fits? So the idea is that this is some old one weapon that might, it may not so a weapon, but a device that is either allows them to translate into and out of the webway at will, or was one of the devices that helped practically forge and create the webway. Ooh, that okay, that's a big deal. That is uh boy, I'm sure the Imperium does not want them to uh to have that. Yeah, that's that that would be bad. And apparently somewhere in this webway, as he mentioned, he is crea- he is currently crafting the key, which mm-hmm. allows him to bore into the webway to find the vault in which it fits. So he's oh. apparently believing that the vault is somewhere probably in the webway. Mhm. What it is, we don't know yet. Spooky. Spooky, spooky. Spooky, spooky. So the key he's looking for is an old one device. Mm-hmm. Um but the thing that should also be maybe noted is the Tuchala en- or Tuchoka engine. The Tuchulsha, Tuchulsha, good god. Tuchanka for I, Tuchanka. I, I thought it was the Tuchanka for a while, but it's it's spelt uh, it's spelt like this. <laughs> to, oh, Tuchulcha. 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 And it and it looks like this. Whoa! It is a weird, wacky ass thing. Yeah, that is weird. That is strange. And it is currently on the rock. Hmm. And the whole thing with the Tulchult engine is this is a MacGuffin, but it is a <laughs> ludicrously powerful MacGuffin that cannot exist in 40K or also to ruin the entire universe. <laughs> okay. Um, basic- Very rarely is there a weapon that strong. It's like, oh, well, 40K can't even have it here. It's like, oh. So, oh, I'm assuming this is an old Dark Age of Technology weapon, but I'm not 100% sure. Even could be an mm-hmm. old one, one, no idea. Um, but if we're talking about the most technologically advanced race in the galaxy, we're talking Necrons, right? Obviously. Oh, 100%, yeah. Um, this was actually utilized a long time ago in another Dark Angels book. I don't quite remember the name of the book. Um, but basically, there is the battle for the Caliban system. This is Asriel is alive, so this is far past the heresy. Mm -hmm. Um, he has the ability to do this thing because they are getting overwhelmed three to one. And his secret is by combining these three engines, he essentially creates this engine, the Tuchulcha engine, whatever. It's Mm -hmm. almost like a genie. um, Really? That lets him go extremely easily through the web, uh, uh, through the warp. It's fast, powerful, excellent warp travel, precise, safe, Quick, all kinds of stuff. 
Oh, well, that's that's a, that's huge in 40k. That's massive. Well, but, I guess it's massive at any time, but whatever, yeah. What it does is it actually creates like a temporal loop. Oh. Okay. It's hard to describe, but it's almost like a loop into time. It's it's time. It's a time travel machine practically. Oh, so this isn't just warp travel. This is a go anywhere at any time, literally, machine? Sort of, or it needs to use temporal travel as a way to do it properly. It's very confusing. I I hope that one of the chatters will be able to explain it a little bit better for me, because it's very tough to describe. But long story short, it's, it's a monkey's paw. Asriel used it. And the temporal loop tore into the past, into 30K, and that giant space hole was actually, by using the T'Challa engine, that space hole was the reason why Caliban was broken apart and everyone was scattered. Oh. He indirectly caused the flinging of the fallen, the, des- the destruction of Caliban by the use of the T'Challa engine 10,000 years in the future. Oh, so, wow. T'Challa, a- whatever. The That's a, engine. Yeah, the engine. So it's so it's Azrael's fault that all that happened. It's all Azrael's fault because he used this engine. He meddled with Dark Age tech or whatever the goddamn hell it is. <laughs> does any does Azrael ever tell anyone that? Like, I imagine he doesn't because if he did, they'd be like, "Yeah, that's some heresy, bud. It's time for you to die." Uh, I don't even know if he realizes what he has done. Oh, okay. So even he doesn't quite know that he's the reason that... Okay, gotcha. But of course, these engines, these powerful things, basically break the universe in 40K. We have time travel and crap all the time, but it's never a thing you could use. It's it's uh, the warp fuck your, your crap. Mm-hmm. You, you didn't know? do it on purpose. Yeah, and since so much of the setting has already been established, it's a, it's a whole thing. So mm-hmm. Vashtor wants this bitch. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he does. Because it's the final piece of his key. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, going from there, after all that explanation through, the rest of the damn stuff goes pretty crazy. The Dark Angels arrive, and then out of a portal from in one of the stars kinds of things that was hidden in a warp portal or whatever, out comes Abaddon and the entire Vengeful Spirit and Black Fleet. And then they Mm. start ganking the Dark Angels and start to beat the shit out of them. Yeah, they got they they fell into the trap, didn't they? The uh, planet has a million defenses on its surface, firing mm-hmm. out upon them. Um, there's lots of like resonant energies on the planet that they're trying to get rid of to try to destroy the planet and cause all kinds of problems. So they're landing on the planet to try to break down all the chaos, corruption, and find what's keeping it alive. Mm-hmm. Asriel lands on the planet, goes through, starts blasting stuff. And they're like, oh, we're fighting to the biggest sign of the energies. Punch, punch, stab, stab. We found the biggest sign of the energies. Why is it an eight-pronged brass circle? Oh, my God, it's Angron. (laughs) Oh, no. Imagine fighting all that way only to find Angron. Angron comes back from his respawn timer and he's like, what's up, Dark Angels? I'm so angry to be alive again. I'm going to kill you. (laughs) I am so angry that I'm here again. Die. All the while, Vastor is out there with Abaddon smirking. Come they to witness the glories of this, my world, my engine, my wormwood. That's what he calls the new Caliban. Mm -hmm. With wrath and with blades and with fire they come, thinking to destroy that whose infinite grandeur they can never understand. Yet all mortals are but cogs in the machines I craft. So come they now to turn and to spark, to spin and strain and burn as their purpose dictates. For in the final accounting they are all but implements of my will. Vashtor the Archifane. Ooh. Bashdoor's got that smug sense of superiority now, but oh, he do. I imagine that's about to get torn down by a certain Lionel. Well, Angron starts busting drum, but busting ass, beating on people, <laughs> uh, and eventually comes Dante, resolving in the system with a giant fleet of blood angels. 
Let's go. And the via Bengals. and via this announcement, they he states that the lion Primarch of the of the First Legion is aboard his ship. Ooh boy. Dun dun dun. And the Dark Angels have quiet Vox for almost a full minute. And they're just <laughs> yeah, like, I bet. <laughs> and then as soon as that minute ends, they all just start screaming questions. <laughs> I I'm surprised it didn't just start with just screaming questions and you're a liar, Dante! Shut up! And you know, just very accusatory uh yelling. Yeah. Well, it's not just that. It's the fact the lion is here. And and they're also like, oh my god, the line, like dad's like the blackmail thing, like dad's here, he's gonna find out what we've been doing. Oh, oh my god, Caliban is here. Look at what Caliban looks like. Yeah, I oh that's true. I didn't I didn't think of that. But yeah, they well yeah. Also, even bigger difficulties is oh my god, the blood angels are here with the dad. Oh my god, they see Caliban. Oh, that's right. The Blood Angels would see Caliban and, oh, no, our secret's out. They are oh, I didn't even frightened. think of that. Yeah. So a lot of the rest of this book is fighting. Um, Dante flies down with a bunch of Blood Angels. He tries to fight uh, Angron. Angron immediately hits him and makes him do the Peter Griffin falling over meme. Ah. ah, ah just like. <laughs> blasts him with like a sword and Dante gets knocked unconscious almost as well he should it's it's Angron for God's sake so yeah that, kinda, that it tracks was, it was kind of sad Commander Dante just like arrives and immediately gets hit <laughs> and then just like gets knocked out I'm like oh okay it is Angron I mean it if is. anybody's gonna do that to Dante it has to be someone like Angron but for all of this the more exciting interesting part is as Angron is about to do a killing blow upon Dante, wreaths of forest kind of mm -hmm. swell in this area, and the lion steps out in between, along with his six uh, risen fallen. Uh -huh. to, the to risen fight and Angron. the redeemed, right? The risen and the redeemed. Mm -hmm. And Asriel's first thought was, oh my god, it's the lion. We're, we might survive this. And then his second thought was, why do the people with him look so much like the fallen? <laughs> Gee, I wonder why that is. Huh? So after that, it's the big duel. It's like four pages of goddamn Angron versus the lion. It's the longest fight ever. I mean, it's Primark v. Primark. It's, basically, I mean, granted, Angron is chaos juice, but still, it is Primark on Primark action. It, it has to be an epic duel, right? The real thing that's keeping the lion alive during this entire exchange is the shield of the Emperor. Basically, whenever someone smacks the shield of the Emperor, it absorbs the blow and blasts it back into your face with like a, like a concussive explosion. Oh, so that's the perfect thing to have against Angron then. Yeah, because, he like blocks the blow and it goes like, blam! Yeah, and since Angron's probably using, like, all of his strength, that's going to get blasted back at him as quite the blast. Holy shit. So the real thing keeping him alive really is the shield. Um, yeah. The sword is super good, but it's the shield. So so it's, this isn't Angron totally getting, like, absolutely bodied and outclassed. It's more like... Angron is still really, really strong, but oh my god, thank god he's got the shield of the Emperor, otherwise he'd be toast. I mean, I think maybe a little bit. I mean, he's obviously one of the best duelists out there, but this is juicy Angron. Yeah. Um, the shield is just the thing that is constantly shown as being the thing that's keeping him up because he's like going for swipes and stabs with the sword and then blocking Angron's 40 million attacks by going bong. Yeah. And and don't get me wrong, Angron's getting hits in. Yeah. So even if you're a diehard Angron fan, this isn't like, oh yeah, he just, you know, gets immediately bodied. Like, your your boy still puts up a hell of a fight, which I'm assuming he obviously loses because duh. Uh so it's not like Angron gets like embarrassed and humiliated and just totally dunked on. He's still giving the lion all he can handle. Oh, the lion is, like, broken, bloodied, and dented by the end of this. 100%. Okay, good, good. 
Um, Angron's got a great quote here, which is uh, it, lovely, is, is, is in all caps, which is, um, you are nothing but a skull to be cast before the blood god's throne. You are meat to, uh, to be bled for his glory. Now fight me and die so I can get on with butchering your miserable sons. Holy shit. Like, That's a great Angron quote. <laughs> he, he barely even recognizes the lion. He's like, oh, it's the lion. I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, Shy, I think he's angry. Yeah, good good call. Well, it's Angron, of course. He's always angry, but damn, that is the most Angron quote ever. I just love the fact that he is like, get on with it. I need to kill your sons. <laughs> One of the more enjoyable parts of this book is when they're uh, fighting a bunch of like great unclean ones, like Nurgleites and stuff. Mm -hmm. And one of the risen walks up behind Azrael and puts his hand on his shoulder and Azrael nearly punches him in the face in like pure <laughs> disgust. It literally sa it literally says here um deep and visceral suspicion still seethed in Azrael's <laughs> breast. Cope and see the idiot. Cope and see. Cope and see. And uh, the Risen says, duty is its own reward, Supreme Grandmaster. He reminded us he expects no less of you. Okay, okay. Although I imagine the Risen and Redeem would be able to give Azrael a nice little fight if their, you know, their dueling partner is lion. Oh, El these Johnson. dudes are, are badasses. One of them yeah, is like... Yeah, they're, they're hardcore, right? One of them, like, dual wields bolt pistols and, like, kills Chaos Space Marines all the time with them. He, like, perfectly... Wow. He's like the... What's that dude from um, X-Men that's, like, a really good shot? Zero, I think is his name. Deadshot? No, X-Men. The, the, is it Zero, the, the other uh -huh. guy? I don't know. He's kind of like that. You know, he's, like, firing perfectly between, like, neck joints and leg yeah, joints yeah. and shit. Mm -hmm. Like, it's pretty cool. Nice. Um, But, anyway, the Angron fight ends with uh, them like tumbling through all kinds of crap for four mm -hmm. pages, uh, falling down, <laughs> beating each other, like punch, punch, like, like the four minute episodes of family guy what they fight when he fights the chicken. It's oh, just, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just that it just never ends. Okay. Um, good, 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 good. As well. It should be. But at the end, he gets the, uh, he gets the upper hand by using Angron's extreme rage against him. Uh, as Angron flings himself in, he drops to a knee and angles his sword up and stabs Angron through the chest and out the nape of his neck. Uh, mm. And then he climbs on top of Angron's breastplate, grabs the shield, and slams it into his nose and severs his head. Oh, he decapitates Angron? And then Angron blows up. Oh, man. Because that he sucks. gets sent back to the warp. But yeah, he like mm -hmm. actually blows up. He's like, ah, bloof. <laughs> okay cool cool i mean it sucks but we all knew that was gonna happen we all knew that yeah. uh the line was gonna get one up on angron and angron was gonna get dunked on and yeah yeah, yeah. So I mean, no we, surprise i mean if, if anything the duel was good i'm not giving it enough credit because it's four pages long but <laughs> yeah you know. i'm just happy that angron wasn't made out to be like a total bitch because that's what I was afraid was going to happen was Lionel was going to show up and they were going to make the lion look like an untouchable badass and he was just going to you know roast Angron and Angron wasn't going to stand a chance so I'm just glad that it was it was like this really like just heated duel and the lion came close to dying and he's all beaten and battered so that's that's fine I'm good with that no nah, it's it's pretty good it's uh yeah. as far as as what he did he certainly threw his own yeah yeah. Um, but during shields. during this main fight uh, between Angron and and him, Vashtor is upon his Ark of Omen, the Auric Myriad, as it is getting beaten to shit by the Dark Angels and the Blood Angels. Mm -hmm. um, he, but during this time, there are people running around screaming, figuring out what to do. The bridge is dying, and he is just quietly pulling open schematics, pretty much like demonic. Uh, routes and adjustments and cables and all kinds of things. And he's going with this, this massive, like giga brain brain blast. Uh, what's, what's, what's the exact Galifianakis meme from the hangover with all the numbers on it going into his face. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know all, what you're that about. Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And through that, a tiny cog and a little whirl 
ends into the the, the uh, prison cell of the Tuchalka engine. And it looks Ooh. at it and says, be no more the captive of frightened primitives. Serve your function. Let me reunite you at last with the Plague Heart and the Ouroboros. The thing in the chamber spoke a single word through lips dry and tattered as parchment. Yes. And Ooh. with that, it circled the engine and he disappeared. Oh, boy. And that's how it ends? And that's the last Arcs of Omen book? Oh, no. Oh, okay. oh no. It, something else happens. Okay, 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 okay. So the demon world starts to shudder. It starts to, to roil and it move. And everyone's like, we got to get out of here. <laughs> oh, really? In that, in that voice, exactly. We got to get out of here. Game over, man. Game over. <laughs> Game over. All right. All right. Uh, so they all end up <laughs> extracting. And mm-hmm. uh, the final pages are Inquisi- Inquisitor Cotiez, um, which is a, an Inquisitor with like a cool eagle guy, looking at a picked feed from something sent to him. And what it was was the demon world glowing bright and brighter and brighter and brighter <laughs> until eventually it started to fold in on itself. And right next to it, a gigantic whirlpool portal opens up (laughs) and the demon world sinks into it, followed by (laughs) Abaddon and the entire fleet. So Caliban gets sucked into the warp again. Nope. Caliban gets sent into the webway. Oh, 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 the, okay. The end, the well, I, guess it, the I guess they call it Wormwood, right? That's what Vashtar calls yeah, New Wormwood. Caliban. Yeah. No, the the ending is him you is him activating the key. Oh boy. And them sending the whole world, including Abaddon, the uh, the Avengeful Spirit ship, and all the other fleet that survived into this webway kind of old one tech device. And disappearing. And Koti as being like, this makes no sense. The webway is the Eldar's domain. Why haven't they done anything? They, they have all these kinds of seers. They can see the future. They have these witches. They haven't. They, why aren't they here? They, they helped us with the 13th Black Crusade. Why aren't they doing this? This is like their main source of travel. What is going on? Mm-hmm. Well, I assume the, the they, they can't see it because it's a... It's a weird time device, so they're probably outside the vision of the Farseers because maybe they went into the past. Maybe they went... Uh, they're in the crazy webway, right? So I, 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 I get why the Eldar aren't doing shit, I think. Well, the, yeah, uh, the Eldar can see the future. That's how they saw everything in the third Night Lord's book. So it's like, if they're going to get this fancy-pancy yeah. thing that can screw around with the webway, why aren't they doing anything? It's true. Yeah. That's the question. Mm. And then it ends. Okay, okay. And this is the last Arcs of Omen book, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, so, man, so some really crazy stuff is going to happen in 10th if that's how they're leaving it hanging until the next big update. Chaos wins, but the Ooh, yeah. but they get a Primark uh, in the end of it. Yeah, Chaos wins, but at least the lion's awake. Yep, they, they have completed the key. <laughs> The key is is done. Vastor has achieved his goal. He has what he wants. And now he needs to search for the vault or whatever yep. he's trying to find. So so Chaos really got the big W. Like, even though the Imperium got a Primark back, in the end, they they lost. I mean, depends. You know, like, they got what they... I guess, yeah, Chaos got what they wanted. Mm-hmm. I guess it really comes down to... Uh, what he's going to do with it. Yeah. And it, I guess it depends what's in that vault, right? Now that he has all the pieces, he needs to find the vault, open the door, and, and all that, right? Yeah. He has the key. Now what the hell the plan is, I have no idea. Yeah. Ooh, spooky. What? It, so you, do, you, do you have any, any inkling of what it might be since it's probably going to be the big reveal for the next edition? Any any inkling at all? Any Any... I, I don't theories? know. Theories? You have a game theory? I don't know. It, it's 
at this point, I mean, it, it's old one tech, yeah. So God knows what it's going to be. You know, like the Necrons have the Celestial Orrery, which is just a giant star map that lets you <laughs> blow up stars. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, so, so and, and yeah, Shai makes a great point. The old ones made the Eldar and the Orcs. Like they could create oh, God, races of people. True. I forgot that they did that. Yeah, the, the war in heaven is the most catastrophically destructive thing ever to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, the the Catan ate stars for God's sake. E, well, that yeah, that's true. And so he's got some kind of thing. And so everyone else, most likely, most likely Eldar and the rest were like, we can't destroy this, so we're going to hide it. We're going to scatter it. We're going to get rid of it. And Vashtor has the key to whatever the hell he wants from it. Yeah. And oof. yeah, wh- whatever is whatever it whatever it ends up being is not going to be great for the Imperium. It's ooh, it's going to be a nightmare. And I, oh, I, I, I hope it is a great nightmare. I hope it's a great nightmare, too. It's a little going to be a weapon or do you think it's going to be like an entity? I don't really know. It's really confusing to me because like the Tuchulcha engine doesn't quite make a lot of sense and having mm-hmm. a time travel device kind of sorta or like a like a monkey's paw that is like okay we can do what you need but it screws up with time um yeah. who, that, like, that's what i was thinking shy i was thinking it might be a vault that actually has an old one or like a, a, a like all of the shards of a catan well it shouldn't be the shards cuz shards of the catan are are captured and enslaved or well a full it's just like a full like on a th- yeah just yeah. like a full living ver- a full alive version of it or as alive as one could be in a vault like that a living katan is like a thousand shards or something cuz insanity that, just one of them would make an in- that's a huge power shift because it's like you have a literal star god at your beck and well assuming you can control it but but that's like <laughs> that's the new superpower in the galaxy if you have an old one right like how, how do you fight that i don't i mean you really don't <laughs> yeah you just kind of get wrecked well yeah the necron have been able to trick them into submission right and like turn them into yeah yeah, yeah but that was old necron power that was pre-sleep yeah now that they're all sleeping and they don't have that full force it's Good luck, Chuck. Yeah, that, that that's the biggest issue is that we don't actually know what they can do because most of their stuff is broken and crappy. Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh... yeah. And so far, the ones we've seen in like Necron books, it's like, yeah, that was a shard that you dealt with. You managed to deal with one little itty bitty piece of that it's... star god. <laughs> like, <laughs> anyway, that nostalgia. Huh? <laughs> a little bit of old nostalgia for what they're doing. It's mm-hmm. like, oh look, they're back. Welcome. <laughs> oh no. It's the Catan. They're they're now they're serving. Can you imagine a chaos Chaos Catan? Chaos Catan. Ooh. That that would be that might be the worst thing for the Imperium, is if Chaos actually got control of an old one. They got control of a Catan. Ooh. Be pretty awful. Yep. 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 Uh, all right. Well, that's the arcs of Omen. Damn, that's the, I I I I quite enjoy that, and I, I I like the mystery that it has left us. A lot of a lot of theorizing, a lot of speculation, a lot of a lot of intrigue, a lot of lion. I like it. The arcs of Omen were so good. I'm sad that they're done. I want more. I mean, hopefully the tenth edition lore will give us a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. I uh, I don't know. I hope so. Yeah, I mean, it's been, like I said, the Arcs of Omen have been great. All of them were really good. That that the the worst one we read was Farsight is like, wow. Or I guess the worst one you read, I didn't read any of them, I just heard about it secondhand from you. But yeah, that Farsight was the worst one is wild, because that one was still phenomenal. Good old, uh, it's making Abaddon likable. Vashtor is the a greatest bit of, uh, of Chaos dub. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm is uh it's interesting that they're getting as uh, it's funny every time chaos gets a dub a primarch returns fall acadia <laughs> gilliman um arcs of omen the lion yep yep 
But, but uh, this time least... it really seems like Chaos came out way ahead, even what? though a Primark came back. The universe needs a good villain. Uh, and, oh, yeah. and for the while, there's like villains plenty, but the Necrons are too busy fighting each other. The tower too small. Jukari are also too small. Eldar are dying. Um, Tyranids the, are just hungry. Tyranids <laughs> can't be made as a good villain uh, mm-hmm. in a sense because they're, you know, the bugs and orcs. Yep. Same kind of issue. Yep. They're just dumb. So if you if you want a, a genuine like villainous force, it's got to be chaos and they need a big enough boy to do it. And Despite the fact that Vashtor is not a huge boy, he's still the boy. Yep, he still is. And he's got Abaddon, too. And Abaddon is slowly being lifted up past the sort of like, oh, you're just the Imperium's whipping boy for a good story where the hero wins. And he's being lifted up to that like true, like, I'm a genuine threat now. I'm not just the sort of bitch boy that I used to be. So that's, it's, it, it, I like it. I like where Arcs of Omen has taken us. All right. Well, to everyone. Take us home, man. Oh, I don't have anything to take us home with. A car? Vroom.